the liberal media meltdown over Elon Musk's Twitter takeover has gotten even worse. So not only are they bashing Musk, but they're now warning that Twitter may now suppress political opinions and ban candidates. Because, you know, that never happened before on Twitter. Watch. Elon Musk calls himself a, a free speech absolutist. Well, first of all, that's BS. Based on his public statements, it's clear he has a very little understanding of the complexities that go into content moderation and, and hate speech policies and the like. Elon Musk buying Twitter says a lot about the priorities of people at the highest levels making decisions that could affect the fate of the planet. On Twitter, it is predominantly straight white men. So when Elon Musk says, wow, this is about free speech, it seems to me that it's about free speech of straight white men. And so let them have it. If you own all of Twitter or Facebook or what have you, you don't have to explain yourself. You don't even have to be transparent. You could secretly ban one party's candidate or all of its candidates. <laughs> oh, Shannon, I know you covered uh, that on your show. And as you said before, it's the gift that keeps on giving. It gives a lot of clarity <laughs> because these people are now making the conservatives' arguments for them. Like, how yeah. dare there be another viewpoint on here? Several of us on this panel are attorneys. I think about when I used to be in the courtroom. What if you had walked in? There's going to be a dispute over evidence. That's what the judge is there to do, I mean, to overrule, to grant things to be in, whatever. What if the opposing counsel said, no, I just get to decide what you present <laughs> to the jury. Forget the judge. I'm just going to, if you don't, and if you don't like it, now I'm going to leave. All these people say they're leaving Twitter. It's like, okay, don't let the door hit you on the way out. If you can't handle free speech that has an opposing viewpoint, we all have to toughen up and hear things we don't want to hear and engage with people who believe and see the world differently. I mean, that's what this, you know, uh, this country, one of the things that makes us the greatest country is this free speech idea. And we shouldn't want the anecdote for bad speech to be less speech. It should be more. That's right. And I probably could have used that particular courtroom a couple times yeah. before I lost in a real court of law. All right. So, Douglas, your thoughts? <laughs> yeah. I mean, um, isn't it amazing, this meltdown? Um, you, you didn't show there, but I, I saw that Brian Stelter the other day on CNN said, uh, uh, it, people are going to have to work out, uh, you know, if, if you, they want to be on a platform where there are no rules. And it's like a party. I mean, uh, you could go to a party where there are no rules, but, I mean, would you want to go? I go, he hasn't been invited to many parties. <laughs> Before I accept your invitation to a party, I want to know what the rules of the party are. <laughs> uh, I don't know that that guy's invited out very much. But, no, I mean, I mean, these people are having a meltdown because they are used to Twitter being their toy. Mm. And the left thinks that Twitter is just one of its toys, like Facebook, like Instagram and so on. And, you know, they were right up till now. And now it, it, it hasn't even, like, changed. It's just that it's a possibility now that Elon Musk will make it a fair platform. You know, that's what they're complaining about. Elon Musk isn't some, like, right-wing maniac. He's a kind of, you know, libertarian, very, you know, free-thinking kind of guy. And, uh, and th what they're worried about, what they're having a meltdown about, is just somebody who's not in ideological lockstep with the left yep. owning one of the biggest platforms in the country. And so they're like, I'm off. I'm leaving Twitter. I'm going to the safe haven of Facebook, which isn't owned by any billionaire plutocrat maniacs. <laughs> I mean... What? You know, that's, that's right. what they think. Right. Like, yeah, I'm going to one of these other platforms. Right. Right. And here is for some actual... Quinn's about the, yeah, the maniac, exactly. yeah. plutocrat, True. everything. Yeah. You just, yeah, yeah. ask that about Mark And for Mark some Zuckerberg. hard evidence of that ideological lockstep, let's look at the donations uh, that the tech employees have made by party. So Twitter, look at that. 99.4% Democrat. Netflix, 98.3%. Alphabet, 87, Apple. The list goes on that you can see. So the point, Harris, is that what more evidence do you need of a slant? But somehow the, the greatest threat, the greatest, um, uh, you know, cause of the hysteria is diversity mm. of thought, is freedom of thought, that fairness that Douglas and Shannon have mentioned. Well, that's the kind of diversity that they don't like. And there are a lot on the left who don't, right? That's, that's why they describe people of color, that we should all have the same mindset, they, that we're grouped in one box. I mean, you know who's intimately familiar with the subject is President Biden, because if you're not voting for him, Oof. you're not black. Yeah. It's hard to forget that. That was said as he was a candidate to Charlemagne the God. So, so it's not a new concept that they don't want the diversity of thought. It's a new concept that they're trying to convince everybody that they're doing this for everyone's good. Yeah. They're going to walk away from Twitter because, you know what, we've got to protect democracy. We've got to... They don't have us or anybody else in mind in America. They're doing this for themselves because they're going to have to come up with copious notes on how to debate and how to say... 
this is why I believe what I believe, and this is this is my point to versus your point, or as you like to say, my data points. Yes, you, she yes. can make a data point yeah. trend. Yeah, yeah. and Kaylee, what else you can do is speak personally as well to sort of the the impact that this has on Twitter account holders. So we have as well um, some numbers here that we'll throw up on the screen of those Twitter accounts who have lost and gained followers just frankly overnight. Between liberals and conservatives, Don Jr. added 87,000. AOC, negative 20,000. DeSantis gained 141,000. And former President Obama decreased by over 5,000. This is a trend I noticed immediately, mm -hmm. as soon as the deal was announced. So I've gained about 150,000 followers in two days, wow. Wow. which is enormous. I mean, this is way more than what these individuals, Don Jr., DeSantis, would typically gain. And it makes you ask the question, it's one of two things. One, are people coming back to Twitter? Yes, in part. I don't think that's the whole phenomenon. But two, are there some mm, miscreants, bad actors at Twitter who had some algorithms mm -hmm. in place that, mm. you know, are rolling them back before the new boss comes into town? Uh, that could be. And I would just say one thing on the note of algorithms. I guess it's Chuck Schumer. He wants something called algorithmic justice. Mm -hmm. It sounds like rhythmic gymnastics. But, <laughs> I mean, please don't well, those are actually this fun. This is the midterm message. Don't ask us right? to do this. <laughs> Having gone to a few of those meets myself as a mom, you and I were talking about Amazing. this on the couch, though, because we were both looking at social media and we're like, okay, so are there people who had been shadow banned? Are there people mm -hmm. out there who yeah. felt like they didn't want to take part of a platform or were told that they couldn't yeah. and they're coming back? You made the point. Nothing has happened yet with right. Twitter. Yes, right. that deal right. isn't ink yet. Exactly. So exactly. if this is the, the beginning, but no wonder liberals are, are throwing all the toys you know, out their crib. They are so mad at the idea of fairness. And just one very quick example, if I can, of that. We all know that one of the most disgraceful things that Twitter has done was that it silenced the New York Post mm -hmm. before the last election. It silenced America's oldest newspaper. Well, here's, here's an idea. If, 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 if they can do that, why did they never even think of silencing the New York Times when the New York Times decided to completely rewrite and lie about the history of this country? I, it would seem to me that if you're going to be fair about, about that, here's a story that the New York Post runs, which is true, but they, they silence that. Here's a story the New York Times does about the very foundations of America, and, uh, of course, Twitter doesn't mind well, that. And yet the clamor is about disinformation. You know? Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.